Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews on the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes. and Let's dive into the world of film and television together. On this episode, I am talking about the 2003 film Battle Royale 2 Requiem. It is the follow-up to the first Battle Royale movie. If you couldn't, if you couldn't put the context clues of the number two uh, together, that is what I'm doing. The sequel to the movie that I reviewed last Wednesday, uh, Battle Royale, had no idea there was a sequel to the movie until I looked up Battle Royale, saw there was a sequel. I was like, well, I got to review both of these movies. So that's what I'm doing. This movie directed by Finji Fukus, uh, Fukusaku as well as Kenya Fukusaku. Uh, it is written by Koshun Takami, uh, Kenta Fukusaku, and it stars Tatsuya Fujiwara and I Maeda. Uh, this is a movie that takes place three years after the failure of the last Battle Royale program. The second act... Uh, is forged there the people in japan forged a second act and a class of students are set are sent to an island with one objective to kill the international terrorist shuya nahahara who was the one of the survivors of the last battle royale from the last movie Overall, not as good of a movie as the first film, sadly. Uh, but definitely takes the story in a very interesting way, uh, interesting direction. Leans into kind of the war aspect. I mentioned in my review of the first film that it almost was like a war movie, uh, but told in a very unique way. And this movie leans a lot more into that kind of making the war aspect on the nose a little bit more heavier handed in this one. Um, <clears throat> whereas the first movie only kind of lightly, you know, had, had the vibes of a war film. Um, apparently the director, Finji Fukusaka, uh, who helmed the original film, started the production of this film, but died of prostate cancer on January 12th of 2003, after only shooting one scene, uh, then his son took over and finished, He, who also wrote the screenplay for both films, uh, but he took over, his son took over as the director of this film. So, originally written by him, the first film was based on a book, this one was a completely original story, uh, it was also his directorial debut dedicated to his father um and like i said this is an original story so an original idea after the first one was based on a book uh this is also a christmas movie if you can't b buy that for those that love to uh highlight the most obscure movies and label them as christmas movies this is a movie that does take place during christmas although aside from it being mentioned at the beginning of the movie that it is taking place during Christmas. Uh, there's no sign of it being Christmas. But for those out there that, you know, like to say Die Hard is your favorite Christmas movie or Lethal Weapon, uh, which I do consider both of those Christmas movies. They at least have Christmas themes going through them. Uh, very L.A. types of Christmas themes where obviously it doesn't snow in L.A. Uh, but this is a Christmas movie, too. Um and it's trying to, this movie, kind of trying to communicate uh, similar, the larger themes uh, that the first movie is tr was trying to communicate, uh, but in a, a little bit more heavier-handed way. Um, 
And in this one, you have kids fighting wars, right? The idea of kids fighting wars. And in this one, it kind of leans into that idea. The kids in this movie also look older. Um, unlike the first movie that really they looked like young kids, which just added to the the kind of craziness of the first movie. Um, and also in this, they're wearing like camouflage. They're wearing like military type uniforms instead of school uniforms. So the imagery isn't nearly as effective as the first movie where you had actors that looked young, like they looked like young kids in school uniforms fighting like they're in combat, right? Where the juxtaposition made the ideas of what that first film was trying to communicate much stronger with that imagery of like children doing these horrific things where in this movie because they look older and they're dressed to look like they are in part of the military it doesn't have that same kind of visceral effect uh, as the first movie does but like i said this movie takes place three years after the events of the first movie right <clears throat> Uh, and now the the kid that one of the survivors of the first movie is now kind of a leader of an anti battle royale terrorist group called the Wild Seven, right? The adults end up passing a new act that is called the Millennium Anti Terrorism Act, which is also known as Battle Royale Two. There's new rules involved with this battle royale, and uh, so it's it's. Shuya, Shuya is at war with all of the adults who are forcing kids to murder each other, right? So this movie is really trying to, and I read that the, the intentions of this movie were trying to get you to sympathize with somebody who is a terrorist, which I think this movie does. And there's definitely movies out there that make you sympathize with somebody who is is labeled a terrorist but is actually trying to do good in the world and trying to expose things like the the idea of a terrorist kind of depends on your perspective right some people like in america at 2023 uh a lot of white supremacists and nazis neo-nazis in america would consider and do consider domestic terrorists to be patriots Right. They literally celebrate people like Kyle Rettenhouse, who murders protesters. Uh, there is uh, I think it's Florida is pardoning a guy who murdered a protester um, and was put in prison. Uh, that governor is going to pardon him because that's the GOP is the party of domestic terrorism. They literally at their conference refer to themselves as domestic terrorists. Right. They're proud of the fact that they are domestic terrorists and to them they call themselves patriots right but for everybody else seeing what they do uh it is pure terrorism it is it is not for a cause it is they are doing the will of the politicians who don't like the fact that people are using their first amendment right to protest so this movie is supposed to be very critical of the u.s specifically and there's a moment that doesn't really fit where that's a similar moment from the first movie where all these kids are kind of corralled together and they have one of their former teachers coming in to kind of lay down what's about to happen right there's another teacher that comes in and this teacher just writes down the names of all a bunch of different countries and then he says these are all the countries that america bombed right clearly showing that you know america is not a good place which i agree with i just the connection of america and and this movie being critical of america doesn't really tie into the movie in any real way because these kids aren't fighting against america necessarily they're fighting against the adults in japan so i don't know it's a little disjointed as far as that one of a few criticisms i have of this movie but i like the attempt i like the i like what they're trying to do right and this movie starts with one of the terrorist attacks where you see all these buildings blow up right so they're like literally causing damage the teacher that's involved one of his daughters died in one of these terrorist attacks right so there's collateral damage that's going on but like the, the message and the the idea is like 
the government is using kill kids to kill each other using kids to send to it's like very much like what militaries do they recruit children out of school and send them to go murder people because they are told to they are told that they are the threat right they are the target so interesting movie right it's trying to do interesting things um and this group the new group of kids that are part of this battle royale too their target their mission is to kill shuya right to kill the kid that survived and him and the girl that survived from the last movie are were considered to be wanted for murder right because they survived after killing being forced to kill all the kids on the island whatever right even though i don't think they actually even killed anybody they just happened to survive <clears throat> but and shuya's hiding hideout with his the other people that are part of his group just happens to be on an island i don't know if it's the same island as before or if it's just another island but it is another movie where it takes place on another on an island in general um, there's still the danger zone type of a thing. So it's still kind of using a lot of the elements of the first movie and using a lot of the elements of the first Battle Royale game uh, in order to force these kids who are recruited or f being forced to attack him. Like forcing them to move through their mission to attack, find and, and attack this kid and all the people that support him, right? And it's also included on an island again. So it's an interesting setup, right? Using the elements from the first movie, right? And very much like kids who join the military and are used to attack whatever target they are told to attack. So in a lot of ways, this is just a normal war movie. It is. And, and it's like with some sci-fi elements, right? They have the collars. They are being forced to do things you know forced to progress through their mission with the danger zones and things like that let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention. All, all ray, ray taylor, taylor show, show fans. fans we're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening. And we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. So some aspects of the first movie were copied, um, but in a way that didn't really make sense. But I want to get into spoilers of this movie. Because it is an interesting movie. Not great. But interesting. It's trying to do something interesting. As opposed to the American versions of these movies. that The Hunger Game movies that are not really doing anything interesting at all. Um, at least this is trying to do something interesting. Uh, but I do want to talk about spoilers. So let's get into spoilers. <clears throat> So if you don't want to be spoiled on Battle Royale 2, which I did watch, it is available, I think it's on Tubi, it's available somewhere streaming, so it's, you can watch it, I think Tubi, so it's free, you get ads, which aren't bad. Um, some of the setup of this movie is kind of confusing, right, because you have the daughter of the teacher from the first movie, the weird teacher that didn't make sense, like his relationship with the girl that survives like they have a weird relationship it doesn't really go into what kind of relationship they have and he had like a painting where she is like the main character and everybody else in the painting's dead and his daughter thought that that was a painting of her but it wasn't it was of this student that he has but this daughter of the teacher to find out why his her dad was obsessed with this girl decides to register to sign up for the next battle royale so part of it is like you can you can like register you can sign up to be part of the battle royale but then also the school that she goes to which is also kind of a, a school of misfits which the first movie wasn't 
her class gets chosen. So I don't know if her class is chosen because she signed up or like it's it just like the how the kids are chosen to be part of this doesn't really make sense. So either way, it is what it is. Not clear. And they're problem kids for sure in this one. And instead of like the first movie where it keeps cutting back and you see how these kids were all happy playing basketball and everybody's like happy and cheering them on on the side and the the guys are happy playing basketball. This one, all the kids, because they're trouble kids, they're playing rugby, right? So it's rougher and they're angrier, right? Which is fine. And they all look older, right? Instead of looking like early teenagers, right? Like middle schoolers like they're supposed to be ninth grade they all look like they are you know 18 to 20 right they all look older so they all look like the transfer students from the first movie that clearly were older than everybody else like everybody in this movie looks like those transfer students they look like young adults more than children and they're dressed in camo and all that kind of stuff so And it's the same kind of setup where they're going on a field trip and on the bus they get gassed and they end up at this thing. Instead of being corralled in a classroom like the first movie, they're corralled in this like it's almost like a military base where they're like in a caged area. And then it's another teacher showing up who's like kind of in charge. But for some reason, the teacher has like a a uh, a, a necklace on as well so it's like it's unclear if that teacher is being coerced to be part of this as well it kind of confusing um and then there's this line while they're all corralled like where they're told to choose what side of the line they're going to be on right if you're on this side of the line you're going to fight and if you're not then you're not going to fight but it's like an illusion of choice because if they don't choose to cross the line then they're just killed anyway so it's kind of a useless thing to be part of this and you end up getting a very similar scene to the first scene where like people don't want to do this some people die in the classroom right you see the the necklaces go off and there's also a part of this one of the other rules that's changed is that you are paired up with somebody and if your partner dies or if you're separate, if you're too far away, if the distance between you and your partner is too great of a distance, then your necklaces will go off. You start to go off if you don't get in back in time, right? Which doesn't make any sense. Like if, they're, if they want to use these kids to succeed in their mission, for every kid that dies means both kids die. And if one kid is, is unable to move forward, I mean, in that way, it would cause them to make sure that they they push each other forward so that one doesn't fall back and get killed, right? In some ways, trying to motivate them, I guess. But at the same time, it just means that t- twice as many kids are going to die. Which it's just it's just so it's just so kind of it's it's an interesting rule, but ultimately doesn't make that much sense. Teacher brings up all the countries that the U.S. bombed, which, you know, I'm all I agree with. Right. Like we America overthrows governments all the time. We bomb countries all the time to for resources, right, for oil or other resources. Right. We're not we're not a very good country. I 100 percent agree. I just don't understand how that criticism has anything to do with this movie i would have liked that to be tied in because i do agree i agree with what they're saying about america but of course i don't know um and the teacher in this over actor way over the top very cartoonish like just just feels so disjointed from the rest of the movie and this teacher also has a fixation on a girl, which I mentioned earlier, ended up being his daughter, but is still like another teacher with another kind of like weird fixation on a girl. Like he's got, there's a scene where he's like holding the picture of her and, uh, but we find out that it's his daughter. So it kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, new rules. It's definitely more like war. Uh, the goal is to track down and kill the terrorist leader, Shuya. 
Uh, they're dressed like soldiers. They all have like protective gear and guns. Like they are all soldiered out as opposed to the first movie where they just have their school uniforms and random stuff in a bag. Uh, so it's a lot different as, as far as that's concerned. And uh, it's far more just like a draft. Like if a government were to draft kids for a war and send them on a mission to kill a terrorist. I mean, that is basically what this movie is in some ways. Um, and it all takes place on an island again, right? They have a specific mission. It's not just like kill everybody. It's like we need you kids. You kids are going to go kill this guy. And they have like here's the the route you need to take, right? And it starts with them all on these boats, these like inflated inflatable boats, motor boats that are going to this island. There's still danger zones. And before they even get to the island, twelve people die. Like as they're approaching on these boats, they get shot. And of course, where their approach is, is like D Day, right? A horrible place to kind of get to land like it's a place where it's it's a situation where a lot of people are going to die it's like they're coming in in these boats to a beach and then there's these cliffs and on top of the cliffs are where the gunmen are so they're able to just pick them off as they're coming in from an elevated situation it's like it is the dumbest place to have these kids get onto the island definitely has that d-day even the Saving Private Ryan, except for the more majority of kids die in the boats before they get to the land. Once they get to land, somehow very few of them die, which is kind of amazing once they get to land. Let's take a quick break from this episode because I want to promote, are you looking for a way to take your love of the Ray Taylor show to the next level? Look no further than Inspire Disorder Plus. As a member, you'll get access to a whole host of amazing perks, including the full week of shows, ad-free in both audio and video versions, a live painting archive, early access to the many faces, members-only discounts and deals, a podcast back catalog with over 600 episodes. But that's not all. As a member, you'll get access to my personal blog as well as my creative writing. You'll also get the chance to ask me anything you want. With all of these benefits and more, Inspire Disorder Plus is a must-have for any fan of The Ray Taylor Show. So don't wait. Go sign up now. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com slash plus and start enjoying all of the amazing perks of the membership. And now, let's get back to the show. The pairing does you instantly see once they start dying in the boats that the the whole pairing rule, where if your partner dies then you die, doesn't make any sense. Like boats blow up. It just like, it just seems like they don't want. It seems like whoever came up with this idea doesn't want them to succeed. And then when the quote unquote terrorists see that these people that are invading the island are children wearing necklaces they stop killing them they realize that the adults have sent children to look like soldiers to go attack them once they notice that they stop right and they try to save these kids and not kill them and they get to a point like they they get them into a place right they kids come in and some of them have died already right before they notice that these are kids with necklaces on that are being used by the adults again, they get to a place and they drop an EMB, they call it, which I assume is an electromagnetic bomb. Right? Normally they call EMP, electromagnetic pulse, uh, but it shuts down all of their necklaces, right? So again, they get hacked and you see like the control center where all the adults are, where the teacher is, how they no longer have monitors on these kids, right? And it's because the quote unquote terrorists want to tell them it's like listen you're being used by the adults we are fighting the adults because we don't like that they are using us as cannon fodder using us to fight their wars using us to kill each other right you need to be on our side so they try to recruit them and of course some people are like all in other people are like we need to complete our mission this is what we're here for so kind of an interesting thing also has very much peter pan and the lost boys vibes kind of like hook in some ways, right? They eventually joined forces, most of them. Um, 
And all the, the whole terrorist group is just a collection of all of the kids who have survived the previous Battle Royale games, right? Before they pass Battle Royale 2, all of the kids that survived that are part of this terrorist group that are fighting against the results, including the kid from the beginning of the first movie, the girl who has the braces and the creepy smile holding the stuffed animal. She is part of their group, too, and she gives her creepy smile, which was a fun little cameo to have it's like oh the creepy smile girls in this one I, I enjoyed that right still has the braces on uh the kid the leader does a live stream speech to rally all of the children of the world against the adults pretty decent pretty decent speech right he's i buy him as a leader And you see how so many of these elements of the first movie and this movie were used in The Hunger Games, but in a completely horrible way. Like the idea of hacking to do this propaganda speech in order to get them on their side and like them fighting against the adults, whereas The Hunger Games, it's against the capital. Like all of the changes they made in the hunger games made it so much worse but you can see all of those elements where they came from in these movies you have there's a flashback to the teacher from the first movie when he goes in and to his daughter's room whose daughter is now part of battle royale 2 and she's one of the people who wants to complete the mission but then ultimately gets on the side of the terrorists and it's her back at home, and it's her birthday, and her dad comes into her room, and he forgot it was her birthday. It's actually the day after her birthday, right? And she's like, no, it was yesterday. He's like, oh, it's today. And then he's like, as he leaves, he's like, I guess I should just do this, like pointing to his head like he's got a gun to his head. It's like, I guess I should just kill myself. You'd probably be happy with that. Like a really shitty dad. First off, forgetting your daughter's name, then like arguing with your daughter over their birthday, trying to gaslight her into like, oh, no, your birthday's actually today. I got it right. And then it's like, oh, I guess. And then using this kind of, you know, this thing's like, oh, I should just kill myself. Right. This is what you probably want. Right. You'd be happy if I did that. Like just a horrible, horrible dude, which doesn't it's just like it's so insane. It's so insane. Just so like out of place in the first movie and in this movie, it just I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's not nearly as much of a battle royale movie as just kind of a straight up war invasion type of a movie. The majority of the the time it's the terrorists just trying to survive. It's them being attacked, first being attacked by the kids. Then they kind of, hey, you're one of us. They're, you're being used the way we were being used. We should team up to fight against. And then they send actual soldiers, actual adult soldiers. So most of the movie is just these people on this island constantly being attacked, trying to survive as the adults try to kill them all. <clears throat> and then, of course, some escape. You know, so I, there could be a third movie potentially. I don't think there would be, but there could be. I wouldn't mind it, especially if, you know, th I think th there's interesting stuff there. But ultimately, definitely not as good as the first movie. The first movie is very provocative. The imagery, the juxtaposition of these young kids in school outfits just doing horrific violence. That is something that kids are being used to do to fight wars for people that don't care about the kids that are doing it, thinking they're doing a good thing for the world. But in reality, most of the times wars are fought for resources. So people could get rich. It is, it is ridiculous how humans treat children, how humans treat each other. So it was an interesting follow up. It was good. I didn't mind it, but could have been way better. And, you know, if if this was set up in a city instead of on an island, which, of course, I'm sure would have required a much larger budget to make it a, be, take place in a city, but would have been epic if this if it took place in a city rather than just back on another island. Uh, the teacher character made no sense. 
So if they change that character in some way to make it make sense. The kid who was the leader, I bought, he's a good leader. I bought him as the leader. Um, you know, I would have loved to see them and their base a little bit more. And like before them getting attacked, just to see what their plans are and see like what their bigger ideas are instead of just we're taking on the adults. But we don't get much of that. It just felt like there was a lot of potential in this movie uh, for it to be a better movie. But, you know, I still I liked it. It's not horrible. Um, but I want to thank you for all tuning in to this episode of The Ray Taylor Show. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Battle Royale 2, Requiem. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for more movie and TV show reviews. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder. Until next time, enjoy the show. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you, you wake, wake up and you realize, realize that everything, everything that you've been dreaming about, about everything that you've been, been wanting, about, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.